Hi, I'm Dr. John McCallick. I'm an assistant professor of accountancy at University College Dublin. I published a book on introductory financial accounting using IFRS that you can download at the link below. This playlist of videos explains all the important concepts and techniques that are in the book and that you will need to prepare basic financial statements. I've included a, a link to the uh, playlist of videos uh, below as well. Please remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you found this content helpful. This video is about recording transactions. And we're going to start recording transactions using something called a journal entry. Remember the accounting equation. We introduced the accounting equation in the video on statement of financial position or the balance sheet. And go and have a look at that if you can't remember the accounting uh, equation. So the accounting equation tells us that assets minus liabilities equals equity. And whenever we record a transaction, we must make sure that we don't break this accounting equation. So if we're doing something that increases assets, then you're also going to have to either increase liabilities or increase equity to keep the accounting equation in balance. And this is the way accountants think about constructing transactions. They think about how assets, liabilities and equity are going to be affected by the uh, transactions. Let's take a simple example. And the examples that I'll be covering here are just examples that involve transactions um, that, that change things on the balance sheet. We haven't got into recording transactions um, that affect the profit and loss or income statement. Um, we'll do that in a later video. So a business buys a car for 20,000. The uh, business will record a car asset because it now has a car that is worth 20,000. So plus 20,000 for the car assets. The bank asset will go down by 20,000 because we've paid the money for the car out of the bank. So why is the accounting equation still in balance? Well, in fact, in this case, assets hasn't even changed. The accounting equation is in balance because one asset went up, another asset went down, leaving assets unchanged. So um, that's, that's simple here, assets uh, assets are unchanged. Rather than continuing to use pluses or minuses as the way that we record transactions, we're going to use some different terms for this. And that is essentially because if you look at the accounting equation, you've got assets, liabilities and equity, they can all go up and down um, and if we use pluses and minuses it's going to get very confusing because an increase in an asset might be matched by an increase in a liability or an increase in an equity item um, uh, so you have two pluses and that doesn't work out very well so um, we have a special system in accounting that allows us to record transactions uh, in a more consistent way, in a specialized way for accounting. And this is the uh, called double entry bookkeeping. And uh, we use the words debit and credit. Now you don't need to worry too much. These are come from Latin, but you don't need to worry too much about what these words actually mean. Um, uh, they are just a convention that has been used for hundreds of years in accountants in accountancy to help us to record transactions. And by convention, an increase in an asset is a debit, and a decrease in a liability or equity item 
is also a debit. And an increase in a liability or equity item is a credit or a decrease in an asset is a credit. So let's see an example of how this works. We go back to our purchase of the car for 20,000. This is an asset and it has increased. So we debit the car asset with 20,000. If you think back to the table, it said debit is an increase in an asset, you know, an increase in an asset and credit is a decrease in an asset. So the other side of the transaction is to credit bank 20,000. So we now have what we call a journal entry. We have a debit, we have a credit, and they're equal to each other. And this means by definition that we are keeping the accounting equation in balance. We might be doing completely wrong accounting, but we are at least keeping the accounting equation in balance. And this is what a journal entry is going to look like when it's properly laid out. We generally have a date the transaction happened. The second column is for the accounts that are affected by the transaction. And then we have a column for debits and a column for credits. So in this case, we debit the car by putting the number in the debit column and credit the bank by putting the number in the credit column. We also have a bit of a description down here being purchase of car. And that's just a little note at the bottom telling us what this transaction was about. So journal entries. We make one per transaction. So we take a transaction the company has done and we work out what are the debits and credits that are required to um, uh, record it. We do that by thinking about what assets, liabilities and equity items have been affected by the transaction. Debits must equal credits in order to keep the accounting equation in balance. So for each transaction, we have to make sure that debits equals credits. Okay. Um, if you have a journal entry where you can have, you can have multiple debits and multiple credits in a transaction, you can have 20 of them if you want, but you've got to make sure that they all add up that the debits are equal to the credits. So the same amounts of debits have gone into the system as credits have gone into the system. Use the correct format. We generally put the debits first when we're putting together a journal entry. Um, you will scramble an accountant's brain by putting the credits first. They won't, they'll look at it and they won't be able to decipher what you're talking about. So make sure to put the debits first. And it is good practice to put a brief description of the transaction under the journal entry because six months later you'll come back and you won't remember what the journal entry was about or what it related to. Um, and sometimes that is a brief description of the transaction. Sometimes it's a reference to some other item in the accounting system where the information for the debits and credits uh, came Okay, thanks for watching uh, this video. Remember to like and subscribe if you found this content helpful. Bye.